Two. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this cabinet meeting on the 20th of July, 2023. Uh, thank you all for coming. And we look forward to a pleasant evening of discussing what's on the agenda. Uh, our first item on the agenda is um, anybody aware of any apologies? Nobody? Item two, declaration of interests. Anybody want to declare an interest? Thank you. Item three is the minutes of the previous meeting. Perfect. <coughs> Item four, question time. I'm not aware of any questions. Anybody? Perfect. Right. Matters referring to the Cabinet in accordance with the overview and scrutiny procedure rules. No matters. Right, item six. That falls uh, into my remit. Um, an update on the uh, future High Street Fund, which is pages nine to eleven in the re nine to twelve, sorry, in the report. Uh, they are a statement of fact. I assume that you've all read them. Are there any uh, concerns, comments, questions? If not, then I'd like to ask somebody to move. Second. In favour? Item seven, write-offs, and that's in the capable hands of my colleague, <coughs> Councillor Thomas Jay. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> this is just a, a, a standard report of formality. Um, this is looking at the, the whole previous 12 months from April to March this year. Um, you'll see we've added a section there that just shows the previous financial year, so you can compare. It's slightly up on the previous year, but it's not largely out from where it normally is. Um, and they are reviewed and scrutinised every quarter, so this is just the, the formality of doing the annual one tonight. Um, yeah, and the recommendation is that members endorse the amount of debt written off for that period for the 12 months. Thank you. I'm happy to move if I'm allowed to move my own, but yeah. yeah. All those in favour? To the contrary, anybody? Thank you. All right, moving swiftly on. Uh, so it's <coughs> the Arms Forces Covenant, and, and uh, again, this is on pages 23 to 46, and I pass that over to my esteemed colleague, Councillor Cooper. Thank you, Chair. So uh, this is a report to move for the Armed Forces Covenant, and it's, it's to approve and endorse a commitment of the Council to the Armed Forces Covenant and Associated Plan. And um, this has been slid into my uh, portfolio, um, which I'm, I'm extremely honoured to do, uh, being a, an ex-serving member of the Staffordshire uh, Regiment, serving out in Iraq and Kosovo and all those funny places. Um, it is recommended that Cabinet, with the regards to this report, re-signing of the Armed Forces Covenant, uh, endorse a reaffirmation by the Council to the re-signing of the Armed Forces Co uh, Covenant in February 2023, endorsing the Covenant duty, um, approve support commitment to the Staffordshire County Council Plan, approve the Tamworth Borough Council Armed Forces Covenant uh, work plan and delegate authority to the portfolio holder for entertainment and leisure and assistant director partnerships to oversee the associated work plan and report on an annual basis to the Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee. Um, this was presented to Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee last week. We have had a few actions of, of, uh, quite rightfully being uh, given to us uh, to take it back a uh, um, uh, want to look at so sort of previous success stories where this has been utilised in in a, in, a, in its own earnest, um, and of which we are going away and we're we're getting those pieces uh, together. I although it states here that it's on an annual basis, I see that as a minimum um, 
a minimum sort of a, um, time scale. I will be going a lot more to Health and Wellbeing Scrutiny Committee just to feedback on on items of, uh, of the Armed Forces Covenant because I think it's only fair and right that we do that justice to those people within our borough who have taken the uh, honour of uh, serving the country. So with uh, without further ado, um, I ask for a mover and a seconder to push this through, please. Or unless there's any questions. Happy to move. Thank you. Um, yes, we um, actually visited um, uh, an army function last night up at Statfold um, and we had a very good conversation with how to work closer with the army and the forces in general. Um, and um, Joe Sands was there and it was a very good constructive conversation regarding the youth, the army, how we can all work together going forward. So yeah, I really applaud this. Right, all those in favour? Right. Item nine, uh, and this is the scrap metal policy 2024 to 2028, which is on pages 48, 47 to 82 of the report. Um, and this is in the hands of our esteemed environmental health and community partnership portfolio holder, Councillor Martin Summers. Thank you, Councillor Turner. Thank you for writing my blurb, Sarah, as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, so the council in its capacity as licensing authority is required to consider applications for scrap metal sites and collectors. Uh, we don't have a policy in force at the moment for these activities and it's considered necessary and appropriate for a policy to be prepared, consulted upon and published in order to ensure that applications for this type of authorisation are considered and determined in a fair, consistent and transparent manner. Uh, the draft policy, which went to licensing on Monday to be looked at, I believe, wasn't it Monday? Previous one. It was previous one before that, was it? Sorry. Uh, sets out the legal requirements and application processes along with the license, licensing, and, yeah, licensing authorities' approach to preventing nuisance to residents and businesses located within Tamworth Borough and the enforcement of unlicensed activities. We've got three licensed sites in Tamworth Borough at the moment and nine collectors licensed to collect within the borough and the licenses last for a period of three years. There we go. Licensing committee at its meeting on the 22nd of June approved the draft policy and recommended that Cabinet approve the draft policy for public consultation. And I've, I've seen it prior to it going to licensing as well and had a tiny little input to it too. Um, but um, yeah, the, the recommendation uh, as it stands is uh, for Cabinet to endorse the draft uh, scrap metal policy and to approve the document for public consultation. So I'll also move and take any questions that hopefully aren't too technical, otherwise I'll go over to Sarah at the back to uh, answer them for me. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Summers. A comment from you? Councillor yeah. you. Just a uh, just quick comment. I was um, I was on that licensing committee and it, um, I'm satisfied with the scrutiny of it that, that night and I think that it's right to pass it on for public consultation. Happy to support. Time's round. Uh, right, I'm looking for somebody to move that. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, seconds. All those in favour? <coughs> to the contrary. Thank you. Right, our next uh, item on the agenda is the uh, accreditation of our museums. Uh, and this falls in the uh, portfolio holder for our entertainment and leisure. Councillor Andrew Cooper. Thank you once again. Uh, so this is uh, the, the purpose of this report is to seek cabinet approval for the adoption and implementation of documents relating to the 2023 accreditation review uh, in respect of Tamworth Castle Museum and Collection. So it's just simply the, solely the castle. And this is something that has been um, done at the castle since 2019. It unlocks um, a lot of um, the other avenues within the, that world of sort of the, the history and the arts. So uh, with the prime example being the Staffordshire Horde, which is um, part of which is currently located up in, in Tamworth Castle. And if you haven't been to see it, I, uh, I, 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 I suggest you do go up and see it because it's fantastic. Um, but that is there because we, we, we do have museum accreditation um, set on the, on the castle. So um, 
it is recommended through the report that approval is given for the adoption of the forward plan for Tamworth Castle and Museum for 2023 up to 2028 and the following supporting policies and plans uh, that, are, that are, are associated with the report that's uploaded. I'm not going to go through them verbatim. Um, and then the second recommendation is to authorise uh, the Assistant Director of Regeneration and Growth in conjunction with the portfolio of holder of entertainment and leisure to progress the Castle's Museum accreditation process and make minor changes to the documents if required. So um, I will move that and I'll be looking for a seconder unless there are any questions. Councillor Thomas, it's all yours. Thank you. Uh, it's a quick question. Um, will you update us if there are changes as it goes through? And it says minor, but we don't know what. Yeah, no, it's, it's an interesting, how do you define what minor is? Yeah, so um, if there are any changes, um, I will let um, Cabinet know and then we'll make a decision as to whether it's got to go through the relevant scrutiny committee, I suppose. But that, it does say minor changes. I can't see, see there being any anything major in there uh, for the cred accreditation review. So, um, but yeah, I will do. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no more f further questions. All those in favour? The contrary? Thank you. Right, uh, item 11 uh, is actually excluded uh, from the uh, public and press and that's in accordance with the provision of the local authorities executive arrangement meeting and access to information England and that's regulation 2012 and section 100A brackets 4 of the Local Government Act of 1972. The press and the public to be excluded from the meeting during the consideration of the following business on the grounds that it involves the likely disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of the schedule 12a of the act and that the public interest in withholding the information outweighs the public interest in disclosing <coughs> the information to the public. <coughs> 